My name is Shahan Tai, and I'm a reviewer from the Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance within CEDAR in the FDA. Today, I'm very excited to talk about considerations on ex vivo conversion of prodrugs during bioanalysis. Before getting started, I want to read this disclaimer. The views and opinion presented here represent those of the speaker and should not be considered to represent advice or guidance on behalf of the US FDA. Prodrugs are derivatives from active drug moieties. The prodrug approach is commonly used to change the drug physical chemical properties. This is intended to overcome limitations of the active drugs in ADMET, which is known as absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity. The transformation from prodrug to the active form can be a chemical or enzymatic process or both. The type of prodrugs are based on the derivatization process, and the common types are estroprodrug. An example is fesoterodine. Phosphate prodrugs, for example, tadazolid phosphate. In this case, the prodrug allows improved solubility. Amides prodrugs, for example, tenofovir alafenamide. In the case of tenofovir alafenamide, the design allows enhanced intracellular targeting of the active drug. Carbamate prodrug. An example is loratadine. When conducting bioanalysis of prodrugs and its active forms, challenges present because similar in vivo conversion may occur ex vivo. When prodrug transform to the active form ex vivo, this process causes underestimation of the prodrug and overestimation of the active drug comparing to the true concentration presents in the biological samples. Ultimately, this process lead to inaccurate bioanalytical data and PK estimation. The following chart illustrates the steps study samples typically go through. At the clinical site, blood samples were drawn, processed, and stored until shipped out. At the analytical site, where bioanalytical data are generated, the site receives and stores study samples, draws samples at the bench top prior to analysis, extracts samples, stores samples in extraction solutions prior to analysis, and then analyzes samples and reported the data. The conversion from prodrug to active drug may occur in all of these steps. That's why it's important to evaluate the conversion thoroughly during the method development phase to estimate the level and the possible impact. Some of the considerations are gathering information on the chemical and enzymatic pathway leading to the conversion. This helps to understand what factors affect the conversion. This may also explain why it's possible to have different stability profiles in varied species and the type of matrices. A key step in method development is rigorous stability testing in applicable biological matrix. This includes evaluating the impact from the sample extraction. For example, processing temperature, different type of extractions, Commonly used ones are protein precipitation, liquid-liquid extraction, and solid phase extraction, and the different extraction solutions. The stability testing with different storage conditions are also crucial. This process includes evaluation on benchtop and frozen storage, number of freeze-thaw cycles, and the condition for post-extraction storage. When using an LCMS-MS method, another challenge is the possible in-source fragmentation of the prodrug. 
this can be handled early on so that the prodrug does not interfere in the analysis of the active drug. Monitoring the change for both the prodrug and the active drug for the stability test can be really helpful because this approach provides the rate and the level of the conversion. However, this would require de the development of quantitative assays for both the prodrug and the active drug. Another aspect that is commonly get overlooked is the range of concentration ratio between the prodrug and the active drug in the in vivo study samples. This information is important to gauge the possible data impact for the in vivo studies. This is also because the same amount of conversion would have different impact to the active drug concentration with different baseline levels. For example, 10% ex vivo conversion has different impact on concentration change for the active drug when sample with prodrug to active drug molar ratio at 1 to 1 versus sample with prodrug to active drug molar ratio at 10 to 1. Generally speaking, the higher ratio between the prodrug to active drug, the same level of conversion generally have larger impact on the active drug data. In this scenario, it is more challenging for the bioanalysis of the active drug to control the level of conversion. When the level of conversion brings concern in the bioanalytical data, different stabilization approaches may be tested. Commonly reported methods included temperature control, pH control, adding enzyme inhibitors, and vacutainer tubes containing inhibitors. Sometimes a method may use a combination of these approaches. When the method is ready, it's important to conduct validation experiments to further validate different parameters. The method validation can refer to the latest bioanalytical method validation guidance, and I will not list the details on method validation parameters here. Along with other validation parameters, valuable information can be obtained to check how well does the method handle conversion. These parameters include specificity test. The purpose of conducting specificity test is to check how the presence of prodrug affects the quanti quantitation of the active drug, and vice versa. Stability test for the prodrug and the stability test for the active drug in the presence of prodrug. Both tests confirm whether the method minimized the conversion with pre-established acceptance criteria. In terms of clinical sample handling, consider to implement stabilization method in the sample collection procedure when needed. Also consider conditions of sample collection and storage so that they can be covered by the validated parameters. When it comes to the sample analysis phase, consider to have sample handling procedure consistently followed. It's important to ensure samples are analyzed within the established stability conditions. These include cumulative benchtop and the long-term storage, the number of freeze-thaw cycles, and the lens and the condition of post-extraction storage. In addition, the incurred sample reanalysis may provide confirmation whether the method and the st stabilization procedure is suitable for a PK study. Now I have two case examples for the bioanalysis of two different prodrugs. The first case is on a phosphate ester prodrug. In the initial testing of stability of this prodrug, the tested samples had, had prodrug at 5,000 nanogram per mil alone, and the both analyzed were quantified to monitor the concentration change. As you can see from this table, the level of conversion were quite different in sodium heparin-treated human blood versus EDTA-treated blood. 
For heparin-treated samples, the conversion was around 25% versus less than 3% for the EDTA samples. Also, the stability profile was different at different temperatures. For the EDTA sample set, samples stored in ice bath had less conversion comparing to those stored at room temperature. The final method for the clinical study used the K3 EDTA as the anticoagulant. During the bioanalysis, the method used ambient temperature to process study samples. Although the ice bath condition appears to have lower level of conversion. In the method validation report, the site included stability data for both prodrug and the active drug in plasma, whole blood, and the post extraction solvent. Stability QCs were evaluated with prodrug to the active drug concentration at one to one ratio. In the study sample analysis phase, the prodrug to active drug concentration ratio for all study samples were within one to two, which is lower than the concentration ratio tested in the method validation. For the ISR evaluation, both analytes had ISR passing rate higher than 85%. Another example is from a published paper on the bioanalysis of triosulfan and its active form. The author determined that the temperature and the pH were crucial for the stability of the prodrug. They also considered the concentration ratio between the prodrug and the active form in the study samples, which can be as high as 100 fold. This means the conversion as low as 1% from the prodrug would lead to approximate 100% increase on the active drug concentration. To minimize the conversion, the approaches the author implemented include treating the human blood samples with citric acid to acidify the sample, minimizing sample processing temperature and the duration, and the storing plasma sample at minus 80 degrees C. To finish the talk, I wanted to share this slide to summarize what I have been discussed. Ex vivo conversion of prodrugs to active drugs brings challenges in bioanalysis. The challenges lies in assay specificity and ex vivo degradation of the prodrugs. Carefully designed method development and validation tests allow addressing key assay challenges early on and avoiding pitfalls caused by ex vivo conversion during sample analysis. Details are important to capture issues and evaluate the impact. Thank you for your attention. Now let's move on to the challenge question. And I only have one challenge question for you. For bioanalysis, the ex vivo conversion from a prodrug to its active drug may occur in sample collection, shipment, and storage, but not during sample extraction. True or false? The answer is false. This is because ex vivo conversion may also occur in the sample extraction and the different sample extraction procedure may affect the level of conversion. Thank you very much for your attention, and these conclude my presentation.